Why can't all men be like Mr. Darcy? Tell you why, because a woman wrote him. In 2000, in a movie that does not hold up, Mel Gibson joined a long line of people trying to figure out what women want. But what if we don't want to, you know, electrocute ourselves in a bathtub while wearing pantyhose and nail polish to find that out? What if instead we could follow the trail of very attractive breadcrumbs that is the group of men we have come to call our internet boyfriends? Could we finally figure out what women, and by women I mean millennial women born between 1982 and 2000, who hold the largest purchasing power of any generation? Can we truly understand what these women want? Because what they want, what we want, actually matters. There are a certain set of qualities that make up your average internet boyfriend. The qualities that women, those millennial women whose pocketbooks run the world, are looking for in their IRL boyfriends, and therefore men in general. There are three basic categories, the characters they play, their looks, and their internet presence. But before we dive into the why and the how, let's take a quick look at the origins of the term. In 2007, we have the first online mention of the term internet boyfriend on Twitter, but really in more of a you've got mail sort of way instead of the internet's boyfriend that we're looking at here. Then in 2011, Gawker uses the term with Ryan Gosling. In 2012, IndieWire does the same with Benedict Cumberbatch. And in 2014, Tom Hiddleston gets the first mention on Tumblr. Then, in 2016, the media really runs with it, and you could call it the year of the internet boyfriend. And the term has been a staple ever since. Of course, men who have embodied the feeling of the internet boyfriend have been around long before the internet. But no matter the medium, our meet-cute with these men is always in a very specific character. Some of the best of them have been written by women and molded by women. No comment on Rygos never having worked with a female director. Come on, man. Most internet boyfriends have been in a role where we see them in a romantic relationship. Or, you know, sometimes we make the relationships romantic. And within these storylines, the traits that they have in common become very clear. One, they're nice to women. Let's look at Nick Miller. Bolu Babalola, author and rom com did it, rom com talks about how Nick actually pursues friendship with Jess outside of just wanting to bone her. When he's not dating Jess, He's never being a good person to her with the object of one day being with her, no. He likes her fully as a person, embraces her fully as a person, and wants to be with her because he likes her as a person. Nick Miller would be a really, really good friend to hang out with. And let's take a look at our beloved Captain America. Okay, in the beginning, Peggy Carter is in a senior position to him, in the military, in the 1940s. And he respects her. He respects her position. He respects her boundaries. Sure, is that why it takes them forever to get together? But he still respects her. The important part. Another characteristic is that they're unafraid to show their feelings for people they care about, even if it's not easy. Let's look at Sherlock. Okay, when we meet him, he's practically devoid of emotions. That's like his thing, right? But he consistently protects John, including jumping off a roof and faking his own death to save John's life. You know he loves John. You've seen the gyps. Back to Nick Miller, he doesn't necessarily know how to express his emotions for Schmidt, but he knows he needs to. You give me cookie, I give you cookie. Gave me cookie, guy, you cookie. You gave me cookie, I got you cookie, man. Finally, something connected to all of these examples is that they're not afraid of growth. In Crazy Stupid Love, Ryan Gosling has a washboard set of abs that seem humanly impossible. He's also kind of a dick in the beginning, but he becomes this caring, in it for the long run boyfriend. Sorry, just trying to imagine Ryan Gosling holding me up over his head. And to bring it back to the beginning of the video, Mr. Growth himself, Mr. Darcy. Yeah, it's hot that he's brooding, but that's not sustainable. In hindsight, it's great that he flexes his hand after he touches Elizabeth, but it's not until he expresses some emotions and follows them up with actions that it's worth anything. You have bewitched me, body and soul. And sure, there are all the crazy conundrums that women like as well. Strong, but soft, funny, but serious. That's not being crazy. That's called being a realistic human being. Our rom com Bolu takes that into account when writing her own material. Something that I've tried to cultivate and create in my writing is a male protagonist that isn't unrealistic. He resents us something that's aspirational without being ridiculous. We can meet somebody 
who elevates us, somebody who sees us for who we are and whose ego is not compromised by the woman's greatness or the woman's power or the woman's agency. So at this point you might be like, yeah, 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 personality, but what about looks? And yes, obviously these men have a level of attractive good looks that got them these blockbuster Hollywood roles in the first place. But they're not all, well, W Magazine called Tom Hiddleston and Matt Smith slightly alien British character actors in their roundup of internet boyfriends. So maybe they're not all like top tier hots. According to psychologist Norman P. Lee in General Laws of Attraction, as long as men reach a level of necessity attractiveness, our basic needs are met and then we can care about other characteristics. So for example, while Army Hammer might be classically more attractive than Timothy Chalamet, Timothy, Timothy, Timmy meets our basic needs for attraction and we like his personality better. I mean, have you seen the shit Army Hammer puts online? So like in real life, looks are what get our attention but they're just a part of the icky, sticky formula that I'm pretty much laying out for you right now that leads to love and infatuation. Which brings me to my final point, which has a bigger leap for IRL boyfriends, but is an essential part of the internet boyfriend, their internet presence. It's easiest to illustrate this by looking at a guy who had everything else going for him. I can't make this final part work. I'm talking about Twitter's worst Chris, Chris Pratt. He has the looks. He played Andy Dwyer, a character that grows, expresses his feelings, respects women, and yet, let's just say that his views don't align with the internet's views. And by internet, I'm still talking about millennial women who 70% are Democrat. We just don't want your opinions, Chris. It's really easy to make missteps on the internet, especially if you're a celebrity. You can be too open, too closed, too curated, not curated enough. And that's why the men who are on our internet boyfriends list are the few and far between who have found the magic sauce, AKA good PR people. Most of them have no social media or use it sparingly. Their internet personalities are constructed mostly by the internet themselves through GIFs, memes, vines, or paparazzi. And in the moments that the coverage may not be in their favor, they address it perfectly and relatably. And so, what do these internet boyfriend characteristics really say about what women want? Someone who responds perfectly to every criticism is incredibly hot and knows when to shut up? No, that's not at all the point that I'm trying to make in this video. You know that. We want someone who likes and respects us. Someone who wants to grow, not just for us, but for themselves. Someone who isn't afraid to show they care about the people in their lives. And someone who really, we can relate to. And we want to be attracted to them. Really, these internet boyfriends are creating an inspirational blueprint for men because toxic masculinity is bad for all of us. And if I wasn't clear enough about this up top, millennial women hold the power with their pocketbooks. So what we want is not something to be pushed aside. So is this interesting if you're a woman who's interested in these men? Yes, but it's also a good educational watch if you're interested in the women who are interested in these men. Prince Charming is not what he once was, and maybe that's a good thing.